the session and uh, welcome again to today's lecture. And today we continue our talk about kinematics. Last week we covered uh, part one of kinematics, which is the transformation matrix. We introduced uh, the concept of uh, the, the T matrix or the transformation matrix. Yeah, so that was last week. We talked about the frame matrix, sorry, not the transformation matrix, the frame matrix. And we talked about what is a frame, what is a point, what is, a, and we also saw some basic uh, matrix operations. Uh, we talked about last week about the concept of uh, introduction in theory only, what is kinematics, what is forward kinematics, inverse kinematics, what's a frame matrix. Uh, we discussed that in order to fully understand uh, the frame matrix, we have to understand the points and then a line. We also talked about uh, line vectors, which are distance vectors, as well as directional vectors. And we introduced them both in two-dimensional and three-dimensional. And we use this definition, the music exercises, to introduce the concept of a frame, uh, a frame matrix, which is essentially uh, a three-dimensional world or a, a smaller a frame, a system of frame or quality system that is defined inside of a global. And we saw that frames are essentially a very fundamental element. And we introduced the frame matrix, which is defined by four vectors. Uh, one, dia, one, um, one positional vector, which is this blue vector right here, and one uh, and three directional vectors that describe NOA or the directions of NOA. The position vector of P is essentially is the exact length you see here, not a directional vector, it's from this point from 0, 0, 0 to this coordinate. And however, these other three vectors are only directional vectors, so therefore there is no ending. We don't care where they end. We just know or care where their general directions are. And we saw how frames and robotics are fundamental because they are used to describe um, specific elements on a robot, um, the position and orientation of important elements of a robot. That actually includes not only industrial robots, but also um, any kind of robot, whether it's a humanoid, a mobile robot, a humanoid, or any other robot. But for our course, uh, for this semester, we will focus on industrial robotics. However, if you take a future course or another course in robotics and you study uh, mobile robots, by the way, uh, this course is available in Unitec. Uh, it's called Introduction to Robotics. It's offered by Dr. Zafri, and it's another elective that you can take, but it's from, not from the mechanical engineering course or subject. It's from the E&E &E department. Nevertheless, you qualify to take it if you wish and it's available next semester for you. Anyway, <clears throat> let's get back to this. So this other course of robotics from Dr. Zafri focused on mobile robots and advanced subjects such as uh, image processing, uh, AI, and advanced programming techniques. Uh, this course we are in today, or this semester, is about industrial robotics and how do we work with them. Uh, the next thing we talked about last week was the properties of the frame matrix, and we saw how it is actually a compound matrix. It's not really a, um, an individual matrix on its own, but it's actually a, a made of several matrices that, that are glued together. Um, three directional vectors plus one positional vector. And then we also talked about uh, a few other properties of the frame matrix, such as the fact that those directional vectors have a magnitude of one. Therefore, even though that we may have not complete information, meaning we don't really need all three angles. We only need two out of the three of every line, and then that should be able to help us uh, find the frame matrix. And we did solve a couple of examples on it, as you can see here. Uh, we also talked about uh, the inverse of a frame matrix, and we dedicated some time to work on it. And we said that the inverse of a frame matrix is a special, because the frame matrix itself is special. It's not exactly a regular matrix. It's a, it's a compound matrix, so its inverse is also a compound inverse. So we again solve this example and solve uh, this exercise. We say that the inverse essentially is made of two parts. First, you take the R and R matrix or the rotational matrix and you find the transpose along the diagonal line, if you don't know what a transpose is. And then on the dot product here, or basically on the positional vector, we find the dot product. So P dot N 
P dot O and P dot A and then multiply by negative one. As you can see, this is the transpose part and this is the, the dot product part. P dot N, uh, P dot O and P dot A, then multiply the result by negative. That gives you the answer and that's how we found that this is the inverse of this matrix right here. Okay, uh, this is where we stopped last time and now we are ready to talk about transformation. Now, before we start the transformation part, I uh, just want to get back to one of the slides that we talked about here, which is, I think it's about, yeah, here. So we said that, um, yeah, so right here. So we said that knowing the frames and understanding the frames is one thing, but knowing how to transform from one frame to another is the second thing. And this is where we are today. Then we will be talking about, okay, knowing frame one and frame two, how do you transform from one frame to another? And for example, if you're already given the location and orientation from here, and location and orientation here, how do you do the actual transformation? And that is the topic of today's discussion, which is about transformations. So let's talk about, let's move on to transformation. So in today's discussion, we will talk about uh, several topics. The first part, which is the, tra the transformation matrix. Last week, we, we introduced the frame matrix. Now we introduce the transformation matrix. There are several other names for it, which we will discuss as well. Then we will do some exercises on the T matrix. Then we will talk about linear and rotary transformations. Um, as can be, if you saw from the previous slide, that there's only a change in position and then a change in orientation. There's nothing else really. So all you have to do is learn how to do linear transformations and rotary transformations or angular transformations, and then combine them to get the final effect. Plus exercises. Then we will talk about the effect of the global and the local coordinates, global and local coordinates. We, dis we did discuss that in uh, last week as well, or maybe in a uh, uh, theoretical uh, subject last week, a uh, few weeks ago, but then we will uh, do some hands-on exercises today. Graphical based transformation. Um, up to this point, we've been working with matrices, matrix multiplications, and so on and so forth. So now we will be doing graphical based transformation. It basically means you look at the diagram and given some information from the diagram, you will then be able to detect the transformations required. And finally, symbolic uh, operations, which is doing the, the same thing that we've done all the above here, but with formulas rather than with numbers. And once again, if it looks like there's a lot of work here, don't worry, these are relatively smaller sections, but uh, we will try our best to cover it in time. So let's go and begin our concept or discussion about the transformation. So as you can see right here, if you look at frame A, which is, we're gonna call it initial situation or initial frame, O1 and N1. O actually is a, you know, if you remember NOA, N as an X and O is Y and A is coming out of the sheet pointing at you right here. So this is N1, O1, which is, represents the frame here, but at, at, at position, or excuse me, at condition one. And this is the final frame, which is at condition, that's my, it's a typo actually, this was supposed to be two. So yeah, let me quickly correct it. So this right here should be, uh, yeah, this should be two. And this other one should also be uh, two. And I think this is a repeated couple of slides. Yeah, let me just quickly do that. So, and then, uh, yeah, two here. And I'm going to make the corrections and update the PDFs and upload them later on now. So this right here, I mean, I don't, I don't understand. I've reviewed this a hundred times and still I did not notice this. So let's get back here. So now we are at the frame one, which is the initial condition, or from frame A to frame A prime, we say that the frame has transformed from the initial state to the final state, which is frame A prime. So frame A prime, or if you want to call it frame A2, if you wish, also can, and this is A1, and this is A2, also can, or A initial, A final, whichever you like, as long as you understand that we are all talking about this frame right here. And as you can see, this frame has, or frame prime, or the final frame, or frame B, if you'd like to call it, has a different position and orientation altogether. The position is defined by the position of the origin, which is this point right here. 
yeah, the position of the origin right here. Now the position is here. So obviously the position has changed. And as you can see clearly, the orientation has also changed. So right here, the orientation of this frame is similar to the orientation of the, of the global frame. But over here, it has a slightly different orientation. So that's why we can say that um, this frame here, frame B or A prime or A2, whatever you'd like to call it, is now has a different position and orientation compared to the original frame. Okay, what's next? Well, mathematically speaking, the way we're gonna do this is by using matrix operations. So what does that mean? In order for us to find the new frame or represented in the matrix form, which is A prime, we need to pre-multiply it. We need, to, we need to, first of all, we need two things. First of all, we need to know the original matrix, which is represented by the frame matrix A. And secondly, we need to multiply it or pre-multiply it by the transformation matrix or the homogeneous transformation matrix, as sometimes it's called, uh, as you can see in this equation. And if you notice that I say pre-multiply, not simply multiply. Um, can somebody tell me why I said pre-multiply and not simply multiply? What is the significance of pre-multiply? Anyone? It's because when you multiply T and A or multiply A and T, it's not the same. Uh, but you know, five multiplied by six is equal to 30, but 30 multiplied, uh, six multiplied by five is also 30. But in metrics, it doesn't work that way. What's the difference in matrix operation? The multiplication itself, pre and after multiplication. That's very good. That's actually the correct answer. Thank you, uh, Zahim. Essentially, this is the, the reason. See, matrix operations are not the same as uh, regular multiplication. The one we are talking about, what I was talking about earlier, five and six, this is called a scalar multiplication. I mean, you multiply scales, and these are defined by magnitudes only, but matrix operations do not work that way. Matrix A multiplied by matrix B, it's not the same as matrix B multiplied by matrix A. So the order of multiplication is very significant when it comes to matrix operations. So that is why it's important to notice here right now that in order for the transformation to work, the T matrix has to come before or pre uh, the original matrix. If you change the order, the result will be something else. So let's agree on this from now. Okay, exercise time. Straight away, we are now done with the theory part about the matrix operation, just a couple of slides only, and now we are ready to do this exercise. So you know the drill. Uh, you have this exercise in front of you. Uh, I'll give you a couple of minutes to perform the operation, and then, as usual, take a snap of your work and then publish it or post it on our group on Telegram. Uh, if you are watching this on YouTube, just pause the video or you just hang out and try and do this operation on your own before we uh, discuss the solution. So once again, uh, here's the operation. We have A, we have T. I would like to find the final frame matrix, which is the transformation on that, uh, the, 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 the new matrix after we have conducted this transformation. If you are wondering where this came from, uh, that will come later. But for now, let us exercise this operation right here. So once again, A matrix is given, T matrix is given, I would like to find the new A, uh, the A prime. So I'll give you a couple of minutes to do the math and um, you might as well practice speed when you do multiplications. So I'll give you a couple of minutes and then we discuss the solution.
uh, once again, I will use your participation in the class exercises as a sign or as a way to know that you are here with us. Therefore, if you don't participate at all, that means you are not at all with us. Then you will count as absent. So you must try, even with error, you must practice and you must do the task. If you are not sure or if you're confused, then you can ask a question. You can ask by unmute yourself and then ask a question, or you can message your question in the chat, or uh, you can solve the question. But you cannot just sit there and watch the show. All right. So uh, I will I will once again take a look at your performance and take a look at your uh, uh, your uh, uh, your your solution in the in the chat group in the in the Telegram group. Once again, if you if you just joined us, we are basically exercising the the operation or the simple task of performing transformations. Given the frame matrix A and the T matrix T, simply perform this matrix operation, the simple matrix multiplier operations. You will have to have the T before the A, and then multiply them, and then that will give you a new frame. And the reasoning for this is because this is how we actually perform, this is how transformations are performed. By, by pre-multiplying the transformational matrix uh, with the original frame, then we get the new frame. Now, how did the T matrix come about or where this came from? That will be discussed in a minute. Right now, we are just practicing matrix operations and matrix multiplication. If you have any confusions or doubt, you can just ask about the question itself. You can ask about it. You don't have to just sit there and watch. Otherwise, uh, I will think that you're not with us. Okay, I've seen three solutions and um, none of them is correct, unfortunately. There is some mistakes here and there. So it looks like this is symptomatic. So let's take a look at it. And it uh, looks like you guys need a refresher on matrix multiplication, which I will not do, by the way, because I've already provided you with the material on Moodle specifically to refresh your memory on matrix operations. So I'm going to show you the solution right here. So the best way for you to solve this is to begin by putting the, the matrices in the correct order. So this is T pre-multiplied by A, so you should write T here and then write A here. That is a must in order for you to see what's going on here. Oh no. My own solution is wrong. <laughs> uh, no, I think I made a mistake in the way that 
this is actually the position of A, but this is the position of T. Yeah. So um, it's possible. So basically, um, I may have gotten it wrong. Let me just double check. I think uh, some of you may have gotten it right. Yeah. Maybe Gurial, I think you got it right. So uh, let me uh, double check again my. Uh... Okay, so this matrix right here there is itself has its own error, but uh, let's do it together. So robotics, let me open up my, my other slides. Okay, let's go here. So the mistake here is that when I wrote this solution right here, I sort of put this column and this column in incorrectly. So I'm gonna do it one more time together uh, with you guys. So point, I'm gonna do it live by hand, my own, uh, my own right here. So 0.66, and. 0.43, The mistake was that I wrote the last columns, I sort of flipped them, so 0.57, 0.53, 0.57, 0.53, 0.57, 0.57, 0.57, 0.57, 0.57, 0.57, 0.57, 0.57, 0.57, 0.57, 0.57, 0.57, 0.57, 0.57, 0.57, 0.57, 
and this one this should be 8.6 and this is going to be negative 4.8 and this one is 8.3 Once again, how do you do the matrix operations or the matrix multiplication? Uh, this should be uh, revised already, but this is the first column multiplied by no fill here, yeah. And this one is weaker. So this is one, the first column multiplied by the first row, or the, sorry, the first row multiplied by the first column. So since this is one and one, so this is the answer for one and one. So 2.1 multiplied by 1 is 2.1 again, and then 0, 0, 0 multiplied by anything will give you zeros again. And that's how we get the first answer, which is uh, essentially 2.1. Now, the second item, which is this guy right here, this is actually uh, it's 1 and 2. So that would be this column, the first column, the same column, right, multiplied by this, uh, the first row multiplied by this, this column. So 0.21 multiplied by 0, that would go away, then you have... 0.43 multiplied by 0.866 plus 0.954 multiplied by 0.5, and then the answer will be here. And then zero multiplied by eight will become zero again. Okay. I actually put this in a in an Excel sheet to do the math for me, so I don't have to do it by hand. So um, you can do it yourself if you wish. I sort of created the calculator. So this is matrix A, matrix B, and then this is the result. Just to, to avoid any uh, problems in calculations, but- uh, uh, Excuse me, sir. Yes. Uh, isn't the TNA value uh, mixed up here? Again, the solution here? we have a 26672. Oh, no. yeah, the whole matrix is mixed up. Yeah, my bad. Okay, so uh, you, mean, you mean here, these two, or uh, this yes. solution? In this solution should be yeah, yeah the, the solution uh, looks like the my solution is mixed up uh, so let's just ignore it for now so uh, this blue solution right here uh, luckily you don't have it in your own slides i'm going to correct it and uh, basically uh, post the correct ones uh, later but it looks like when i made the when i made this solution i may have uh, mixed up the matrices matrix a and b so Oh man, yeah, let's do this. Yeah. So once again, position number one is uh, defined. Uh, in order to do the matrix operations from uh, on this on multiplication, right? You will have to do uh, row the first row multiplied by the first column, as you can see from here. So 2.1 multiplied by 1 is the 2.1 again, and then everything else is 0, 0, 0, so that will go away. Then if you want this position right here, so you know what, let's just copy this. So, and also, yeah. So if you want this position right here, Yeah, if we want the second position right here, so it will be two and one, so, uh, sorry, one and two, so the first row multiplied by the second uh, column right here. I think this is still correct one, right? Uh, oh, once again. Uh, man, yeah, I get it now, I get it. This should be here. Then obviously my whole matrix is off. My whole uh, solution is off, right? Okay, I'll have to redo the solution myself. So, we'll have to ignore my solutions. Uh, I'll do those myself. And I will post the correct one for now. But then, the correct solution, obviously, is that you have to put the correct order. And that is actually, this is the correct order. So, uh, you have to put T in front, and then A in this, in this order right here. And then, the first position will be the first row multiplied by the first column. So that will give you actually the correct answer, which is uh, A prime. Uh, I will 
propose the correct solutions for these later on in our uh, offline. Um, so not a very good start. <laughs> so um, I hope you guys don't mind this uh, hiccup start, but let's move on. So uh, let's carry on. So I'll, I'll double check the solutions and I'll let you know later on who was it right and who could it right. Maybe uh, my own solution is wrong, so let's move on. So the solution for this is I guess to put A, uh, you have to put the, the distance is actually wrong, wrong so it's far away. But this is actually the correct way. So you have to put P in front in this order and then A is here. So the first item will be one, the first row multiplied by the second by the first column that will give us um, the value put accordingly. But I think it's also coincidentally also 2.1 because that is 2.1 and 0, 0, and then 0, the last one will take away this one. So that's just by coincidence happens to be correct. But I think after that, the mistakes begin. So I'll do the correct uh, multiplication later on, and then I will uh, consider it wrong. So let's move on to the second question, which is right here. Um, again, the although my multiplications were off, but I will get the right ones correctly. But then I want you to see this exercise right here and try to figure out the correct uh, steps at least or procedure to finding the answer. So the difference between this exercise and the first exercise is that in this exercise, in the first exercise, you were given the original frame and then the key matrix. Visually speaking, that means you are given uh, this frame and the transformation matrix represented by the dotted lines, and you would like to find this final frame. Okay, that's good. And uh, in the second example right here, you are given the opposite. You are given the final frame, which is this one right here. And then you're also given the thematic. So visually speaking, that means you are given this frame and the dotted line, and you would like to go backwards, so to speak, and you find the original frame. So once again, I'll give you a moment to think about it and to how to solve this question. And again, I'll give you some time to, to do this exercise. So go ahead and do this exercise and then we discuss the answer. There's a little bit of trick here. I'll give you some minutes, minutes to think about and then we will do the solution or we'll do the work together. Okay, any ideas? Anyone can, you don't have to show me the final solution, but then I wanna know how do we solve this question? Any ideas? Any takers? Uh, transposing, transposing one of the metrics. I think you mixed the word transpose with inverse because transpose and inverse are two different things. And I remember this because last week you also said the same thing. Transpose and inverse are two different things, my friend, Erfan. So make sure that you, Get the terminologies right, but if you meant inverse, then you're right. The uh, the way that we do this is that we use the same equations that we started from before. See, this is the original equation: a prime is equal to t pre multiplied by a. Nevertheless, unfortunately, we don't have a. In fact, we need to find it. We are given a prime and we are given the t matrix, but we need to find a itself. So we're going to use inverse. Erfan, yeah, not um, transpose. So how do we do this? We simply, we need to move this guy to the other side over here. How do we do that? We simply multiply it by its own inverse. So if we pre-multiply the T matrix or pre, if we pre-multiply both sides by the inverse of T, as you can see from this line right here, so this will be true. Uh, you have to multiply both sides because it's an equation. So you, you can't multiply one side of the equation and ignore the other. Okay, so that's good. So what we have in here is that we have the matrix multiplied by its own inverse. That would result in a unity matrix of one, if you think about it. So then these two will go away, resulting in this 
pi on the So in order to solve this example, uh, you will first have to find the, the inverse of the T matrix right here, and then pre-multiply it by A prime, which is in this case given here, that will result in A itself. So this is the only trick about this question. So once again, we, we don't know where this come from, but we'll, we'll see that in a minute. But uh, let's do uh, at least one step of this. Let's exercise this one more time from last week and find out or at least calculate the inverse of T matrix. Let's call it a refresher on last week exercise. Last week, we did learn how to do inverse operations. Or how do we find an inverse of any matrix? So last week, that was the inverse of a frame matrix. Uh, yes, uh, the transformation matrix is also a frame matrix. It's a special purpose. It's only used to transform. But nevertheless, it's a frame matrix, just like any other frame matrix you've seen so far. So we just give it a new name, transformation, just to distinguish its purpose. A frame matrix is used to describe the position and orientation of something on, our, on the robot. But a transformation matrix is simply used to describe a transformation, obviously. But nevertheless, this is also uh, it's, it is also a, a frame matrix. So knowing T for now, let's just quickly uh, try to find the inverse of T. Go ahead. I'll give you a, again uh, a quick minute to, to do the math. Find the inverse of T matrix and quickly post it on the Peter group. And I've seen people already. Uh, Yeah, we need to find the inverse. So some people already figured it out. That's correct. Uh, and then uh, they have solved. Uh, actually, they already solved the question outright. So good, right? Good job, guys. So let's move on. I'm not going to show you the slides because I have double checked my calculations. Uh, I may have mixed up some things here, and so I don't want to go through that embarrassment. So I'll double check this one again. This exercise. And then uh, I will check it out and let you know. Uh, but by the way, uh, there is one question here is, OK, let's say we did all of that and we found out in the end we found uh, A. You see, uh, OK, so the first step is obviously to do this exercise right here. So the very first step is to find the inverse of the T matrix. Um, so the inverse of the T matrix, this is T matrix, and this is the inverse of it. You can double check it yourself. Uh, and then find out whether or not it's the correct answer. And then once you have the inverse of the T matrix, pre multiplied by A, I think this time around I got it right. The position of it, I think so. Uh, yeah, so this one's correct, this one's here is correct. I hope so. I'll, I'll double check it later on. And then uh, once you have this in the correct order, then you multiply them in this correct order, and you should get the final answer here. Okay, so let's say you did find A at, at the end, you see right here. Um, is there a way for us to quickly verify that this is the answer without having to do the process all over again? Anyone? Times with the A, and then we will get the T minus back, right, sir? Uh, yeah, but then, although mathematically speaking correct, but then one easier way is to simply uh, go back and apply this one right here. Oh. See, you found A, is that right? You already have T, and you already have A prime to begin with, right? Mm -hmm. So since you already have T and you already found the A's, then simply multiply them in this, in this order and double check whether your, your final answer will be A prime. But of course, um, this is only for you while you are learning or doing multiplications or uh, transformations in, in the beginning, you know, as a beginner. But let's say if you're on a test or a quiz, you don't, you don't really, I'm not really asking you to redo the multiplications like this. But instead, take your time when you do the math, especially when you're dealing with numbers, not symbols. And uh, that's why uh, you could actually get things mixed up. I think this one is correct order because yes, this is actually is the correct order here, A prime, and this is T minus or T inverse. And then this is the same thing here. I just pushed it up and then the answers should be right here, okay? Okay, so uh, now it's 4.50, a quick break to, to take, uh, to, you can actually uh, to, to give ourselves a small break from this time. And after we come back, then we talk about linear and rotary transformation. I uh, see, so far you have seen the T matrix only as in the form of a ready-made matrix. 
But where did it came from and how did this, number, this matrix came about? This is what we will discuss after the very short break, about five minutes break, and then uh, we come back and do the session. We can continue with the session. Are we done with the QR code or do you need me to keep them anymore? Because I want to start. Uh, if you haven't yet, please scan your QR code for attendance. Let's go. Because it's going to restart the session. Okay, so I'll put it aside, but if you haven't, let me remind me here before uh, six. Okay, so now that we talked about the T matrix in general and how do we use it. Uh, in the earlier exercises, we assumed that the T matrix has, is already established. We have already have, we have a matrix ready and it's in our hand and then we know how to use it. But now we need to know how to develop this T matrix itself. And in order for us to do so, we need to understand the concepts 
of linear arbitrary transformation. Um, there are other names for the linear uh, transformation, sometimes they call prismatic, sometimes they call it uh, for linear. But I mean, I mean, all of these synonyms for linear and rotation, right? angular, angular, rather than rotary. But uh, they all mean the same thing. So let's begin talking about the easiest transformations of all, which is the linear transformation. In the linear transformation, we wish to transform only the location of the frame without changing its orientation. If you look closely at this second frame here, it had moved from this position to this position, but the orientation has not changed. And this is uh, the, the purpose of the linear transformation. It had moved, specifically speaking, we, the, this frame has moved or moved along dx. dx essentially is this line right here, which is parallel to the x axis here. And dy, which is this line right here, which is parallel to the y axis. And dz, which is right here, which is parallel to the z axis. Don't worry so much about the actual values here. This is just an exercise, but just to show you that in order to move this frame from here to here to here, or to this final position at the end, we need to change the position according to these values, dy, dz, and dx. And notice that we use d rather than p. p is usually used for position, but d is usually used for difference or differentiation. Um, let's not use differentiation. I don't want to fridge or damage anyone here. Think of this as the difference in position in, in y, and this is the difference in position in z, and this is the difference in position in x. And this is why we use d rather than uh, p or n d o. Now, analytically speaking, how do you represent this motion in a matrix form? Well, here is how it looks like. This is the same dx, dy, and z values that you want to apply to the changes. And then, since we are doing a pure linear rotation, there is no changes in orientation. So therefore, this matrix right here is the I matrix. This is a small table, I hope you ignore it. Um, since there is no changes in orientation, right? So then we ignore the R matrix altogether or replace it with a unity matrix. And then we simply um, put a diagonal matrix C here. So can we just ignore all of this altogether and we just use the color? We can, but then you will see later on that it's, for, it's a lot simpler to work with the matrix as a whole. With this as considered as a, you know, number one, this whole uh, R matrix considered as unity. And this is the three positions changing, positional changes, dx, dy, dz. And it's much, much easier to work with this. this way. So from now on, when we see T trans is T transformation. Uh, so, excuse me, translation. Translation is another word for linear transformation. That's the synonym I was trying to remember earlier. So, trans here, translation. Uh, nothing to do with the language translation. Simply translation simply means uh, moving along the line, just like linear. So, T trans means the translation matrix or the, 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 the transformation matrix for linear, essentially, is the matrix you see in this form. This is the template for it. And all you need to know is the values of dx, dy, dz. If you know the value of dx, let's say 5, and this is 3, and this is 4, just plug in the values, and then you pre-multiply as we did here. You get what I mean? So once you know the value of, let's say this was uh, 10, and this is 5, and since we are on the same plane, so the value for z is 0, we just plug in the matrix here. So the t matrix in this case would only be um, the pure for translation. So, but this is, there is a change in orientation here. Yeah, yeah, I know. That will come later. Before you change the orientation, you need to move it here first. So if we are talking only about the pure translation, the only need to know is what is going to be the positional changes. The changes in x, y, and z values, and they are represented by dx, dy, dz, and at the same time, the three by three rotary matrix is set here. Why? Because obviously, we are doing a pure linear transformation. We are not changing any orientation. And why is this? Okay, anyway, so now let's, that was the, that was it. That was the, essentially the linear transformation. Now let's talk about rotary transformation. Now in the rotary transformation, we are, guys, uh, I need your full attention 100% here because the rotary transformations are not simple or are, or are not as simple as the linear transformations, as you will see in a minute. So first things first. We wish, in this example right here, we have the original frame, which is the red frame you see here. 
has O and A and N is popping out of the, or actually is pointing inward into the sheet, as you can see from the, from the X you see. So this frame right here is NOA, and uh, we want to rotate it with a magnitude of angle theta, and as a result, we get this new frame right here. Um, can somebody ask me, or can somebody answer this question? I have a question right now. This angle right here, it only rotates this line, line A2. There's no angle specified here. So how can we know that O2 is also here? What happened? How did we find out that O2 is here? There is no angle, as you can see, the angle is only between this line and between A. It's only between A and A, right? There's no angle of changes here. So how did we know that O2 would also be here? Can somebody answer that? I'll say this question one more time. Yeah? Uh, in this frame, we, would, we wish to rotate this frame uh, an angle equal, let's just say, uh, 45 degrees. So the original frame was, you see, as you can see from here, and then this is the final frame, the gray color frame. But if you look at the geometry of this diagram, you see that the angle is represented only between these two lines and nothing here, you know what I mean? So how did we know that the amount of rotation for O2 was also equal to this amount? Why not put O2 differently? Why not put O2, say, for example, right? Uh, like this, for example, let's say O2 was like that. Why not we just do that? You know what I mean? Will this be uh, correct or valid? No, sir. Why not? And obviously, I want the answer. Uh, why not? It's rotating about the n axis, so a and o has to be perpendicular. Yes, uh, this is the answer. You don't have to specify all the angle between every uh, direction of rotation because, as we said before, when we define those frames, we said that they have to have 90 degrees among them. This is the property of the frame matrix is that every one of those NOA must have a 90 degrees angle. If you go to the, three 90, the, the this example right here, you will see that you only have to specify the angle here. This uh, one sorry, sir. Down. Your voice is getting lower. How about now? How about now? Can you still hear me? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so once again, I'll, I'll repeat that last line. You see, since this is another frame, and uh, this is a gray here, it's also a frame, so we only have to rotate one of those lines. The other one will follow because they have to maintain a 90 degree angle between them. Maybe I should draw it. So see, this has to always maintain a 90 degree angle the same way that there's a 90 degree angle between these two. Uh, that is why uh, we don't have to uh, specify every line. We don't have to put an angle between A and A and O and O and so on and so forth. It's because the 90 degree angle is always maintained. Exactly. Is my voice clearer now? Sometimes breaking up, sometimes okay. Yeah, unfortunately, I, I mean, I literally have the microphone right at my mouth and I'm shouting in my mouth here. <laughs> yeah, but uh, we, we all can still understand what you're trying to yeah, say. So, so. Thank you. And uh, I hope that even if, let's say, you missed something now in a live session, you would all go back or you, you would go back to the recording and then uh, watch it again. Okay, let's move on. So now, uh, okay, so now the, that was the concept of rotation. We said that in rotation, we only want to rotate about a, a certain axis. We don't want to move it around. We just want to rotate about a certain angle. So in this example, we rotate about n. Now, in the 3D world, we have three axes to rotate about. So we rotate about x, rotate about z, and rotate about y. The same way in linear, we also translate along x, translate along y, and translate along z. But in the rotations, we now rotate about x, and rotate about y, and rotate about z, and we always apply the right-hand rule when it comes to rotation. And uh, earlier, when we talked about translation, we have this definition for a, a T matrix. The T matrix for translation was this guy right here. X, Y, and Z, the translation along X, the translation along Y, and the translation along Z. And as you can see, this is the three matrix. Now, when it comes to rotations, however, it's not that simple. In translation, as you can see now, we have three rotational matrices, one for each axis. Rotate about X, 
has its own metrics or its own template. Rotate about Y has its own template, and Rotate about Z has its own template. And I wish to tell you otherwise, but unfortunately, you will have to memorize or at least have this ready somewhere whenever you do uh, kinematics in the future, because um, this is basically uh, C theta means cosine, yeah? cosine theta, negative sine theta, and then sine theta and cosine theta. And again, the same meaning here. So what is actually the meaning of this line over here? So it means the T matrix or the transformational matrix for the rotate excuse me, or rotate angle theta about X is, is shown in this form. As you can see, only the rotational matrix has changed the position is zero, zero, zero because we are doing pure rotation. Now, when you want to rotate theta about Y axis, so the matrix as you can see is changed. Rotate about Z, uh, rotate angle theta about Z is again, as you can see, the matrix has changed. Now, where do these matrices came from, the derivation, where does it come from? Actually, it comes from converting from local to global. But uh, I don't want to um, dwell on the conversion or the de derivation. I will, put it, I will put it as a handout or a notice or a note in Moodle or Moodle into where these matrices came from. But it's good enough, it's good enough for you to know uh, that this is the matrix that we're going to use. So right now there are four matrices that you have to put in mind. First one and the easiest one is the translation matrix, which is dx, dy, dz. And then we have the rotational matrices, which is three of them, which is x and y and z. Now the differences between rotation and translation. Translation here means linear, yeah. In translation, and this is the fundamental difference here, in translation. We can combine the movements along the axes. Uh, this is the plural of axis, yeah? A A A X, I S. The plural is A X, E X. So the, we can simply combine the movement in X, Y, Z by simply putting them all in one matrix, as you saw here. By simply putting them all in one matrix, then we can actually combine the X, Y, and Z movements. And that's, not a and that's basically the simplicity of the translation matrix. But as you can see for rotation, we cannot, or we don't have, you know what, I don't want to keep going back and forth. I'm going to get this going. I'm going to go back a little bit here and uh, gonna copy the guy. Copy and then put it here. That's for simplicity. So that we have it available in front of us so that I don't have to go back and forth. Okay. Yep. One more. Yep, right here. That's good. So once again, this is the key matrix we saw before, right? And we were able to combine uh, X and Y or the linear amount of the linear motion along X, Y, and Z into one singular translation matrix. Unfortunately, we don't have this luxury in rotation. In rotations, you have to do rotate X by itself, rotate Y by itself, and rotate Z by itself. And uh, that's one of the differences. The second difference is that the order of the axes in, in translation here, which one comes first is not important. Uh, I mean, which one comes, whether it's X first, Y first, Z first, it doesn't matter because at the end you will get to the same destination. And you can visually see that uh, in our very first example, uh, I think the best one is right here, yes. You see, if I started with uh, this movement first, I mean, it's, uh, yeah. if I start from here first, let's just call this, uh, X, right? So, yeah, if I start first of all with this line right here, let's just call it X. Let's do this one first, yeah, number one. And then we do this line first, which is Y. So, I know this is not X and Y, but you bear with me for a minute. This is N and O, yeah? If I do N first, and then O, I will get here to this point, all right? But if I do O first, right? And then in second, I will still get to the same point. So what can you do? It doesn't matter the order uh, of operation in linear yeah? or in translation. If you're doing linear operations, then the order of operations, X first, Y first, Z first, it does not matter. You will always gonna get to the same position. That is why you can just simply combine them. So if you do X first, Y first, Z first, 
or whichever in the order you like, you will always get to the same translation again. Once again, in rotation, that is not the case. Once again, if you do rotate about X, then rotate about Y. And then in another example, you do rotate about Y, then rotate about X, but they're not the same. For example here, you see, this is a, a trans, translate uh, along X and then translate along Y, that's exactly equal to, um, I didn't change anything. <laughs> so uh, let's discard again. So <laughs> another pattern, uh, so this is supposed to be uh, seven, and this is Y, and this right here is um, X, plus X and five, yeah. So whether you do it, uh, whether you do it in this order, in this order, it's actually the same thing. But in uh, rotations, however, that is not the same thing. So in rotations, these two the sequence of commands. Again, another mistake here. You know, uh, I was making those, uh, you can see about 83 slides here, uh, all in one day, so those typos are inevitable. Anyway, so rotate about x, multiply by rotate about y, that is not the same as, three, that is not the same as rotate about y, uh, then rotate about x. And this is, has nothing to do with matrix operation or matrix multiplication. Because as you can see here, these are also individual matrices, matrix one, matrix two, matrix one, matrix two, right? So although we are changing the order of multiplication here, but the end result is the same. And this has nothing to do with matrix operation. It's just a coincidence that in linear translations, or not a coincidence, it's actually the properties, that, the properties of the linear translations that it allows uh, for this to happen. But for rotations, that is not actually the case. So uh, knowing the order of multiplication is a, a, a very important thing for us to understand. Uh, we will come to this later on. Um, but for now, uh, time for some more time. So uh, exercise time. So uh, the very first exercise time is, um, break time. is this simple exercise. Once again, let's get your hands. Um, let's get some, some exercise time doing matrix operations. So you have a matrix or you have a frame given to you already, as you can see from here. And now you would like to find the new frame. Oh, so with the frame shown below, find the final position of orientation of the graph. So basically, you have this frame, and you have the, this action right here. Find the final frame, or find the new frame. So go ahead. I'll give you a couple of minutes to think about it, and then perform the task. I'll give it myself for a minute or two. Think about it, and then find the answer. Given the original frame, given the action, and knowing the key matrix for translations, find the new frame. What is it? Where is it? Somewhere here. Oops. I'm sorry. Jumped ahead. Yeah, this one right here. Yeah, so this is the template. This is the, the matrix for translation. So now knowing the template for translation and knowing, if you remember from our very first exercise, knowing T and knowing A, how you find a prime. Remember that? So now you have the template for T, you have the values and you have the A. Put it all together and find the new frame. I'll give you a couple of minutes. Actually, you don't need a couple of minutes. It's very easy to it. Yeah, first one, first exercise, let's say two minutes.
Yeah, I've already seen the answers. And if you're thinking this is too easy, and you're not, um, um, you're not wrong. The translation uh, operations are the easiest ones to do and to perform for this obvious reason. I'm, I'm only writing this in complete detail just because this is the first exercise. In reality, if you see something like this and you want to write this answer directly, as some of you already did, that's fine by me. I'm just writing the complete solution like this for learning purposes only. Okay. So what's going on here? Well, first we write uh, the original. Uh, we, we in order for us to find the new frame, as the question wants, we need to use this equation, which is a prime equal to t pre multiplied by the original frame. So we need to find t. T itself is given indirectly because we know it's a translate, as you can see here, translation, right? And we know the values, and we know the template of trans, which is, you can see dx, dy, dz. So we just take dx is equal to three, dy is equal to zero, and dz is equal to one, and we just plug it here. Some of you already did not do the multiplication, they just straight away came here. That's fine by me, but um, I'm just showing you what's going on or what happened behind the scenes. So quickly speak, I mean, very quickly, since this, T matrix right here, and let me uh, switch on my marker here. Yeah, since this is a unity matrix, I don't know why my marker does this weird thing. But anyway, since this is a unity matrix, and again, there's a dipole here, so it's supposed to be a one. So one multiplied by anything is equal to that number again. So again, this matrix is not affected. So since this is unity, and this is the same matrix, so all you really have to do is just copy paste this part right here. And as you can see, it's exactly the same part as you can see here. So this is a very quick shortcut for you. Since you have unity here and you have uh, whatever numbers you see here, just copy paste the numbers directly into here. You don't really have to worry about the values. If you really want to do, if you want to be uh, systematic, you can simply do the multiplications. 0.2 multiplied by 1 is 0.2 again. And then 0, 0, 0 will be gone, so 0.2 again. And you can repeat the process if you want to exercise matrix multiplication. But if you want to take a shortcut, uh, an I matrix here or a you know, unity matrix multiplied by the whatever you see here, then there will be results. What about the last part? Well, uh, you can, if you want, you can really do the multiplication. Let me clean it up a little bit here. So eraser, let's clean up a little bit. So, so what about the last one? Uh, the last one essentially is. Uh, Really, uh, it's a column multiplied by row again, or row multiplied by column again. So once again, I don't know why this keeps on happening. Those weird lines from, from uh, when I do this. Anyway, uh, let's try this again. So you can see, okay, right here, and then here, and then here. So I see one multiplied by 12 is 12, then zero, 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 and then one multiplied by three, resulting in this 12 plus three. Okay, that's horrible. Let's just try. Let's create this up. Okay. So 12 uh, plus 3. Is that right? And uh, if you repeat the process of multiplication, you will see that you really always going on. Actually, if you think about it, uh, let me just write something nice here. If you think about it, actually, what's going on here is that this is Px, or this is P, yeah, and this is D, if you think about it. So this is Px plus Dx. And uh, that's the very definition of what we are doing in linear translation. We take the original position and we change it by the amount of dx by simply adding the amount of it. And this is py, and then we add the amount of dy, and dy happens to be zero. So this is dx, and this is px, is that right? So 12 plus three, that's what you see here. And then this is py, and this is dy right here. So as you can see from here, and finally, this is PZ and this is DZ. And as you can see from here, you get me? So, sir, do I have to do the multiplication like this every time I see a translation? No, no, no. Once again, I'm just showing you this for the first time only, just for training and learning purposes. But in the future, if you want to jump from this line into here directly, into this one, by all means, go ahead. And in fact, it's a shortcut. Uh, by now, I'm sure, I'm sure you have noticed how tedious matrix multiplication can be. And that is why you would need to learn as much or as many shortcuts as possible. And we have already learned a couple of shortcuts. Shortcut means is that 
you would find the answer of the multiplication without really having to do the multiplication. What are you talking about? You remember how we identified that this answer right here, this matrix, the three by three matrix, is simply copy paste from here, right? Well, that was a shortcut on its own. How did we identify that? Is because you see this this matrix right here, this three by three, is simply it's multiplied by a, a unity matrix. So whenever you see this situation in the future again, it's simply repeat the process. If you see a unity matrix multiplied by another R and R, just simply copy that R and R. You don't really have to do the multiplication. And second of all, whatever you see, uh, th that's the first shortcut. The second shortcut is when you see a translation, obviously, you don't really have to do a multiplication. You just have to uh, do the P plus D, or you have to apply this nice equation that you see, or this nice, lovely uh, situation right here, which I'm going to write it down here. That the answer is simply is P plus D. So whatever original position you had, just add to it three, uh, add to it value for D, and then you get the final. So 12 plus 3 is 15, minus 5 plus 0 is minus 5 again, and 10 plus 1 is 11. And that's the answer. And since the original matrix has a unity here, so we just take the original orientation and we put it as changed and nothing happened. Is that clear? I hope this is clear for the first exercise. Now let's do the second one. If, the, if you understood what happened in the first exercise, go ahead and do the second exercise. And by the way, in the future, you don't have to wait for me to, to finish explaining or to finish one exercise. If you already understand what's going on and you want to jump ahead with me doing the next exercise or whatever, by all means, go ahead. Um, and, but if you didn't understand what happened in that exercise, then you can follow the discussion and the explanation. So right now, let's do this exercise again. And once again, you can do this the long way or you can do this the short way. So I'll give you a moment to think about it and then uh, try and do this uh, uh, Try to find the answer the quickest way as possible. Go ahead.
Okay, no answers. Oh, wait, somebody answered. Yes, correct. Finally, a correct answer. So, yes, also correct. Adley, you got it right the second time. So now let's move on to take a look at the answer. So here's the answer. First of all, let's uh, once again, let's take a look at the long journey before the shortcuts. The long journey, or what I mean by the long journey, I mean the, 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 the proper and complete answer, sort of template or training answer. The first is you have to write this line. Um, just to put a note to yourself that the final frame is equal to T P multiplied by A. The purpose of this line right here is to tell you or to remind yourself that you're doing uh, the forward step, meaning giving the final, giving the, the original frame and the translate the transformations, find the final one. We are not doing the, the, the opposite of this. We're not doing the inverse of this. Okay, that's great. Now, the T matrix itself is composed of two steps and they are given in this correct order. So you have the first translation, which is 300301, followed by translation 080, and then the original frame, which is A, right here. So then what do you do next is that you take this matrix, this, the way of writing it this way, or the symbolic way, and then translate into a matrix form. So once again, take this line right here. So let me try this again. So once again, you take this line, and then you translate it into a matrix form, as you can see from here. This is essentially the equivalent of writing trans301. This is the matrix right here. And then you take this line right here, and again, you translate it into its own matrix form. And of course, this right here is the original matrix, as you see from the question. Okay, now we apply the same shortcuts that we did last time. We said that since this is a unity matrix here, and this is also a unity matrix here, so there will be no changes in here, so just copy paste and put it here. So the rotational matrix unchanged. Okay, good to go. Now, what next? We now know that this is essentially is P plus D, is that right? But now which one? We have basically two Ds. We have this D and we have this one. No matter, we just add them together. So we have D1 plus D2, is that right? We just add them together. So then 12 plus zero plus three. So that gives me 15 right here. And then repeating the process now, starting from here, negative five plus eight, that's negative three plus zero, that's negative three by back again. So then, uh, wait, that's plus three. Sorry, because it's a negative, yeah? So negative five plus eight, that's three plus three plus zero. Not so that's actually, that's the correct answer. And then finally, 11 plus 1, that's 11. Uh, and there's a 0 here, so that's again 11. So we are good to go. So this is, and of course, the rotational part did not change, so we're good to go. You got what I mean? So once again, what's going on in the translation? Even though we have multiple rotation uh, translations, excuse me, translation, yeah? Even though we have multiple translations, the process seems to be relatively simple. All you really have to do is just start with the original position, and then combine the, 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 the differences or combine those motions, is that right? So all you really have to do is just add those together. Now, if you think about it, I could have just taken these two together and add them and the result into uh, if I could have taken D1 plus D2, right? And just add them together, right? And just basically result in D. So three plus zero is three. So just like the previous exercise, when we have P plus D, right? So we can say 12 plus three is equal to, you know, just 15 and then negative five plus eight. And by the way, it's a coincidence that I have zeros a lot here, but just a coincidence, yeah? By right, we should have numbers. But then uh, again, well, you could have just combined these two directly. So three plus zero is three, zero plus one is uh, zero plus eight is eight, and one plus zero is one, and then you add those to the position. So that's one of the great features of the translation matrix, okay? So I hope by now you get the hang of it. And if you do, uh, let's not do this. I'll leave this one for you as a workout. Uh, let's do this. Let's do this exercise, exercise 2.4. So what about exercise 2.3? I'll come back to it in a minute. But for now, do this exercise right here. Again, 
I hope you get the idea now what's going on with the translations. So quickly do this now and uh, give me the final answer to translation, to this trans, the final uh, frame. Yep, people getting the hang of it, all right. Um, and I hope by now you understand how translation works. Even if you have 100 translations, but they have to be all after another, yeah? If there's a rotation in between, then this doesn't work. But as long as you have multiple translations like this, so all you really have to do is just combine them. So here's a quick shortcut for you. If you have the multiple translations, uh, one after another like that, so all you really have to do is combine them uh, straight away. What do you mean by combine them? Just add them all together. So three plus zero plus one, that's a four. Uh, two plus eight, that's a 10. One plus three, that's a four. And that will be our real translation. Basically a combination of all of those. So that would be a four here, uh, 10, and that would be a uh, four here again. Is that right? So that would be the real, and you can simply ignore all of these three and just do only one translation. You get what I mean? And then once again, we know how translation works. Just add it to the X. So 12 plus 4, that's only 16. Man get a 5 plus 10, that's a 5. And then 10 plus 4, that's a 14. And the rotation does not change because it's a pure, rota pure rotation, uh, pure translation, and voila, that's the answer. Okay? So translations are really straightforward. And by the way, I left a couple of exercises for you. Uh, we did this exercise together. But what if you inverse? Oh, sorry, what if you reverse the order of the operations? I think by now you should know that that will not make any difference because whether it's zero, three, whether this one or this one is the same because you simply combine them, right? So this is still three, this is eight, and this is one. You know what I mean? I mean, the overall, yeah, trans, uh, translation. Whether it's here or whether it is also this order, right? Uh, this is also three. Uh, eight and one. You know what I mean? So it doesn't matter the order when it comes to translation. But if you want to do this, okay, uh, now we move on to the real deal. Next, now we move to the trans the rotations. And uh, in order for you to do rotations, I hope you have access to the template, uh, the rotational template. If not, uh, it's in the slides. Uh, Yep, those who are still answering the previous exercise, thank you very much. Uh, for those, those, those questions, please keep them coming. Uh, whether or not I moved on, you have, to, you have to participate, as I said before. So now, um, let's now move on to the next exercise, which is... Um, I think my mouse died. Yeah, <laughs> My battery I'm sort of stuck, so it's stuck in the other window. Okay, please proceed with this exercise. Uh, you can see the slides on Moodle, and you can see the template uh, when I fix my mouse, and I'll be right back.
So, rotation. So now let's talk about rotation. So in order for you to solve this exercise, you need to have this matrix right here. So, uh, you know what? I'm going to show you a nice way to remember to memorize the rotational matrix up here. So how do you uh, how do you remind yourself of it? So uh, let's just do it ourselves. So we know it's a rotation, right? Uh, it's in, yeah. So we know it's a rotation. So the first thing is first is that the rotational matrix does not have any linear components. So at the very least, we know that that part will be zero. So up here. Um, if, what I'm doing right now is that how do you memorize, how do you remember the template for this one? If you remember the the the, the x-axis is defined here, is that right? The first column and the first row, is that right? These are the x-axis, is that right? So if that's the case, this is rotate about x. Well, we're gonna start this way. So we're gonna start with one here when the very first item, then zero and zero and zero and zero. That's annoying, really it's annoying. I don't know why this keeps on happening. Let's just try and fix it. Try and, and deal with it. Uh, maybe it's the different marker of the pen, something like that. Okay, so once again, uh, we start with the zeros. One's at zero and zero here. And now just remember this pattern, cosine, sine, Cosine, cosine, sine, sine, cosine. Yeah, and so basically, yeah, sine here and then cosine. And then uh, don't forget the negative sine is here. And the rest is just theta. So I was trying to give you a notice or sort of a shortcut how do you memorize this thing, but somehow the marker on Windows is giving me a headache. So I'm gonna basically paste the template directly. This card. So go back to this slide right here where we get the template, yeah. Uh, yeah, right here. So this is a template for rotate about Z, uh, rotate about X. As you can see, the, there is a pattern to it. It's not really a random memorization. You know what I mean? And rotate about X comes in a certain template, in a certain uh, form. First of all, you have to remember that since it's about X, so these are the column where we, uh, you know what? Uh, we can do that here, yeah. So since it's rotate about x, you can see that the x column is the ones and zeros, is that right? Rotate about y, this is the y uh, column and this is the y uh, uh, row, right? So again, the one is here and the rest are zeros. And over there, this is the z uh, column and the z row. So again, this is the one and then this is the zeros. But if you look at the rest, you will, be this, you will see the same pattern, cosine, sine, sine, cosine. Cosine, sine, sine, cosine. Cosine, sine, Sine, cosine, and this pattern is the same throughout. Whether you're here or we're here or we're here, it's just that the location of where this cosine and sine have land. Another thing to remember is where the negative sign is. So for x and z, the, is the top sign, the top one is the negative, and for the y-axis is the bottom sign. Cosine is always positive, and of course the position vector is always zero. That one, if you want to memorize how the matrix looks like, I don't want to give you is the first time you see it. It might be a little bit difficult for you to remember things, but once you work with it for a while, and what I mean is that you do multiplications and stuff like that, and it will become second nature to you to remember how it looks like. Okay, so without uh, delays, let's so get back to the example, and knowing, once again, knowing this frame matrix, and knowing the T matrix, and the template for cosine about X, go ahead and perform this exercise and find the answer. And I can see that some of you already have done so. Let me take a look. Uh, oh, that's the previous exercise. Let's see this one. Uh, okay, design. And then uh, it appears to be the correct answer. Let me take a look. So the T matrix is this, and uh, this is cosine 30, by the way. Uh, this right here can verify, so this is cosine 30. Of course, the angles are all in degrees. So cosine 30 is right here. Uh, this is negative sine 30. Uh, the template for cosine, for rotate about X is right here, so there's a negative here. And uh, this is cosine again, and this is negative sine. And of course, there is a zero, so zero here. Three multiplied by the same matrix. Uh, and then simply multiply it, and you can see uh, 
A quick shortcut to remember is that since this is a pure rotation, so the position will not change. You can verify this yourself, by the way, but you can actually see that if you multiply this, if you want to find this answer right here, so that is one and four, so one multiplied by four. So 8.6 multiplied by one and the rest are zeros. And the same thing for the rest. But another way to, to quickly verify this is to remember that this is a pure rotation. And since it's a pure rotation, there'll be no changes in position. And that is why, that's a, another, you can say, shortcut. Since it's a pure rotation, so that's why this right here will not change or the position of the frame. Uh, provided, of course, that you pre-multiply. If you post-multiply, that, that will actually result in a different thing altogether. For now, this will not be different because uh, we pre-multiplied right here, and uh, it's a pure rotation, so therefore no changes in position. Okay? But then, of course, this time around, there will be changes in rotation because this is a, a rotational matrix or rotational uh, transformation. So obviously, you'll have to do much. There's no shortcuts, unfortunately. You'll have to multiply uh, the, to find those uh, the three by three matrix. Okay? So once again, you'll have to exercise and do uh, some of you have already done this and successfully so, so good job. Uh, once again, I hope you get the point of what I'm doing right now, which is essentially just to get your hand uh, busy doing matrix multiplication. If you remember the first time you did matrix uh, multiplication, things might have been a little bit awkward when you did it for the first time. But then now that you have done several exercises in a row, hopefully it will not only become easier, but also becomes faster and becomes some sort of a second nature to you. And this is what is the purpose of this exercise. Okay, so yes, the hand me the first one to get right. Good job. And let's move on to the second or the next exercise. What happens if you have these two rotations? And uh, we've done this before. Uh, uh, sorry, we've done uh, multiple translations. What about multiple rotations? So go ahead and repeat the process, but this time if you have multiple rotations. Go ahead. Uh, hopefully by now, as you start to see how rotations are a little bit more, or re require more work than linear. Linear was a very straightforward thing, but uh, just add things together. But as you can see in matrix, in, in rotary operations, things are now are becoming a little bit more more, more, more difficult, I should say, or require more work, and also more accuracy when you do multi matrix multiplication. So take your time, do not rush things. The speed will come later. Right now, you need to work on your accuracy. The more you do of these exercises, the faster and more accurate you will naturally become. So do not rush yourself, just take your time and do the manipulations, and in time, you'll find yourself naturally faster than before.
Okay, I've seen some interesting solutions. Some people are taking shortcuts. They are actually smart ones, but um, inaccurate, so to speak. So let's take a look at uh, the correct solution. By the way, if you are thinking to yourself, oh, this is too much, I'm giving up already. No, don't give up already. Even if you don't complete it at all, let's say you stopped and you want to see the solution, after this session now, after we finish today, you should go back on your own time and again attempt to complete the solution on your own. There's no skipping it. If you delay this or say, I don't want to do this, I'm just going to look at the solution, I'm not going to do it myself, you will never ever learn it and you will never ever become faster in making multiplication. It's really like jumping into the pool. If you don't jump into the pool, you won't learn. Okay, so let's take a look at this. So essentially, uh, this is a rotate x, rotate z. So this is rotate x right here, and this is rotate z. And uh, x is exactly from the previous example. So this is rotate x, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.3. This is from the template, and this is the template from z. So what I did was, I first I found, uh, remember that this is our original, this is our, uh, how do I say this? This is our own guideline. This single equation right here is our reference point. No matter what is going on, what kind of transformations you are working with, you will always have to have a T matrix pre-multiplied by a frame matrix. That's it. Now, the T matrix itself could be composed of several individual transformations. So what do you do is that you first find those, the, the single T matrix first that represents all of those transformations first. And that's why I put this in a separate step. So I first find T. T is represented of these two steps. So the first step is rotate about X, and then the second step is rotate about Z. So how did you know that this is the correct order? Why not Z before? Uh, I will come to that later, but for now, accept it. That the X comes first and the Z comes later, okay? So now that you have these two transformations and in this correct order, now you perform multiplications here. And that will give you this result you see right here. Um, you might want to take a screenshot of this or something, because, uh, oh yeah, somebody asked me this last week, sir, could you share the slides with the correct solutions? No, uh, I'm not going to do that, uh, because people will simply copy. If you want to see the solution, come to the video again and watch it, or you can take screenshots if you wish. But uh, if I, and also, as you can see, I'm not, um, sometimes my own solution is wrong, as you saw earlier today. So that's why uh, I need you to do the work yourself. So anyway, so what's going on here is that we first, we find the T matrix. That's step number one, which is the one we need here. So the T matrix is composed of uh, rotate about X 30, or rotate 30 about X, and then uh, post multiplied by, or pre multiplied by uh, rotate 20 about Z, as you can see from here. And then you take these two and multiply them together and you get to this result. So this right here is the T matrix. That's why sometimes in some books, this is called the homogeneous T matrix or the homogeneous transformation matrix. Homogeneous simply means singular, one unit. Because sometimes, as you will see actually, that sometimes we have five or seven actions, not just two. And you want to combine them all into one singular T matrix. And that's why um, it's very important sometimes that you do this thing. So that's why moving forward, let's make this as a, a procedure. But the very first step is to find the T matrix first. And then the second step is to find the final frame, or the other way around. Maybe this is the we want, or maybe we want to find the other way around. But uh, let's not do it, do it all in one shot, like with some of the solutions that I saw just now. So now that you have the T matrix, you know what? I want to clean something up here. So now that you have the T matrix, uh, yeah, let's do this. Since we did this step already here, we have the T matrix here. We have A is already here in this question. Uh, we just simply uh, do the multiplication, right? So now this is the T matrix that we found from here. So let me uh, use the pen here. So this is actually the same matrix you see here. Uh, this is a horrible line. Let's try this again. So this matrix is even worse line, but we have to do it. So this is the same T matrix, and obviously this is the original A matrix, right? Right. So T matrix pre-multiplied by the A matrix, which is exactly as you see in our original equation, that gives us A prime. So this is the final frame, and this is the final answer to our question. So once again, the very first step is to find the T matrix, 
And then once you have it, then you pre-multiply it by the original frame to find the final frame. Second, so uh, what if this was just one action? That's fine, it's just one action. But then if it was multiple actions that are suggesting you find the T matrix first, then you can find the other uh, the final frame. Okay, now that we get the hang of it, once again, let's try this again. But this time I change the order of the operations. In the previous example, you have X first and then Z next. Now you have the opposite order. A quick shortcut is you already have the metrics for this and you already have the metrics for this. You just have to change the order of things. So go ahead and uh, do this second exercise whereby the order of the operations has changed. Now we are just inversing the operations. Uh, now that Z is first and then X come next, what will be the new frame matrix? Go ahead and do it. And again, I'll give you a couple of minutes to do it. And I think up this is the break here. Yeah. So let's do this exercise and then we take a quick break. Uh, do this exercise first and then uh, we discuss it, then we go for a quick break. All right, uh, we're running out of time, so I'm gonna have to leave this for you as an exercise. But anyway, uh, let's take a look at the solution. So once again, this is the TZ matrix, uh, Z20. Uh, this is the X30, but as you can see, the order of operations is now different. Uh, and then what you would do is that, now that oh, we, and we agreed earlier that when you change the order of multiplication, you're gonna get a different matrix altogether. Oh, it's a, it's a different matrix. Thank God. I thought I made a mistake again. So it's a different matrix from the previous answer. So you take this new matrix and you pre-multiply it by the new frame. That will give you a new frame altogether. Now, I want you to do these two exercises completely and properly and then compare the results. You will see that the results actually in here will be different from the other. There will be some similarities, but there will be also differences. And I want you to, to do this on your own time and find out the difference. Now, uh, that we will discuss in a later time. Now, uh, what about this now? Let's move on to this next exercise. And this is the last one before the break. Oh, yes, uh, this is a quick exercise. Uh, the first one, we will have combination of rotation, translation, and rotation again. Uh, you can put the ex exercise 2.7 on hold. Uh, uh, can continue on your own time. Let's move on to exercise 2.8. There is again a shortcut here or a quick shortcut that I want you to take a look at it uh, before we discuss the second topic of our discussion. So, a quick break. Okay, once again, for the interest of time, I'm going to show you the, what I call it, the, the trick here or the shortcut here, but then I'll leave the, the rest of the exercise for you to do it on your own time. Now, once again, in order for us to solve this question, by the way, uh, this question is different than the others. The first time, this question is not asking you to find the file frame. If you, think, if you read it correctly, the question is asking you, determine the T matrix. Simply, 
meaning only this step, step number one. If you remember in the earlier example, the very first step was to find the T matrix and then use it to find the final frame. Is that right? Well, sometimes, or some question, we don't want to do the second step. We just want to find the T matrix alone. And that is the purpose of this exercise. Find the T matrix only. And now, usually in this kind of questions, when you ask you to find the T matrix, you will have uh, a lot more ex uh, activities or actions. So how do we solve this? The very first step is to take these actions in this given order. I mean, I, mean, um, I apologize, but the very first thing to do is to figure out the correct order. But we will ignore that for a minute. We will assume that this is the correct order. And we will address the issue of the correct order of multiplications after the break. So now, let's just assume that this is the correct order. What do you do next? Well, the very first thing to do is to, to write the matrix, or to write this actions right here in matrix form. So step number one is to convert these lines into their matrix form. So this is again, rotate X, and this is rotate Z. Why this keeps on happening? I hate PowerPoint. Okay, so... Uh, Then. So this is the trust, the rotate about 30, this is rotate about 20, we've seen before, but careful, this is rotate about Y, yeah, not rotate about Z. So this is the Y template, okay? And this is translate along X, uh, along X, Y, and Z. And the new shortcut that I wanted to show you is what happens if you have this situation you see right here. And this situation is uh, what happens if you have a translation followed by What happens if you have a translation followed by uh, a rotation? See, this example, this happens when you have a translation here. This is painful, really painful. I have to investigate what's going on and why this is happening. Anyway, so in this situation, as you can see, we, if the trans comes before the rotation, this is the rotation and this is the trans. If the trans comes before the rotation, just combine them. Simply mean just uh, combine them. What does that mean by combining? Take the positional part from here and put it here, and take the rotational part and put it here. And basically, that would be the end of it. So if it, this becomes uglier right now. So uh, thank you, PowerPoints. So as you can see, the result of this combination is actually shown below. So if you look down here, and you will see that this is the result of the combination. We simply take the positional part and we put it here, and then we take the rotational part and we put it here. So this is the next slide. And this happens only and only if you have a translation that comes before a rotation. Um, how does that happen? Is simply from experience. If you really do the multiplication, you will end up with here. But the, the other reason explaining it is that because this is a pure translation and this is a pure rotation, but this translation comes first. So combine them, you will get this. And then so what about this situation here? What if the translation comes after the rotation? That does not work. That will not work. So you, the, the shortcut does not apply. It only applies when you, the translation comes before the, uh, the rotation, okay? Why, what's the purpose of this shortcut is to simplify your work. Rather than doing three matrix multiplications you see right here, you'll only have to do two, which is exactly similar to the, pre to the previous exercise. The previous exercise and the one before that also, you have two rotations to do, two rotation multiplications to do. And that's why by using this shortcut, you can greatly reduce the amount of effort and multiplication and labor work to do this. And then you can come up with this solution. Now the rest of the multiplication, I'll leave it for you as a workout. And then you simply have these two together, multiply them, and you get the final answer. You can screenshot this if you want for reference, and then you can work it on your own time as well. I think this is it. Yeah, for now, uh, we can take a, a quick five minutes break and then we can come back for the last hour to talk about local and global plus geographical solution. I don't think we will have time to do all of the content for today uh, because we have a lot of to do. Uh, we have global and local and we have graphical and we have symbolic. I don't think we will have in one hour to do all of this together. Uh, I think we will probably do the symbolic next week uh, along with forward kinematics. But no matter, it's okay because forward kinematics is quite small compared to the rest, so we will have time.
I think for today, we will finish with these two only, which is global and local plus graphical uh, transformations. Okay, so let's take a break, a quick break for five minutes, and I'll see you, uh, and then we will finish the sessions for today. See you in a while. Break time.
All right, so let's begin with our final session of uh, well, our final part of today. I'm not sure if we would have time to do the graphical bit. Besides, I think we should. Or maybe we will skip the graphical and go straight away to symbolic. Yeah, I think so. And we leave the graphical to next week. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. So I think today, for now, on this last hour, we will do local and global, and then symbolic. And graphical transformation is next week, uh, along with kinematics, uh, forward kinematics. OK, so let's take a look at this situation right here. Um, this one, um, I think we've seen this before in our, in our previous slides when we were talking about terminologies. And we talked about the difference between local and global coordinates. And uh, we said that, um, we've seen this slide before, and we said that there's global. And I hope now when you see this again, it will make better sense when we talk about local and global. So again, uh, once again, here's the frame. We're trying to do rotations. and. Uh, when we say earlier, rotate about x axis. You know what? Let me double. Did we see the slide before or not? Was this shown in? And uh, I think we've seen this uh, briefly, but not to great in earlier slides in terminologies. It's okay. We can quickly glance through them. So we say earlier that we have rotate about x thirty. For example, yeah. Let's take a look at. Um, this example right here, rotate x about 30. And then we come here and say rotate x about 30, or rotate angle theta of 30 degrees about x axis. Which x axis are you talking about? We did discuss before that there are two x axis. We have the local uh, or the global x axis. And we've seen before the implication of that. You see, let's take a look at the situation from the two dimensional view. This is the same two axes that you saw here. This is the, x, this is the local x-axis, or n, and this is the global. And if you look at it from the front view, you will see this view right here. Okay. I know that the, this frame is supposed to be smaller, but just bear with me for a minute. This is supposed to be smaller. Just ignore it for a minute. But we know that the n is here, and x is here. All right? Now, as you can see, the local and the global x are not the same, and therefore their effects are also different. What does that mean? This is the effect of rotate about the local x-axis. If this was the original frame and I rotate about its own local axis, this is the new frame, this gray color one. And if you want to see the same situation from three-dimensional view, here it is. So this is the original frame, the, the red color here, yeah? the red color frame right here. And after you rotate it, it's going to become this gray color frame. I mean, the position wise or the position of its own uh, axis or the position of the reference frame did not change. It's still here. Its only rotation has changed. All right. So let's put this mental note somewhere that this right here is the effect of log rotate about local x axis. Um, once again, if you want to see it again in three dimensional view, that's it. Is. This is how it looks like. If this was the frame in, in, the, in the space and you want to rotate about its own local x axis, well, this is how it's going to happen because we applied the right hand rule. And the position of it did not change. The position of the, of the, of the frame itself or the position of its own reference or its own uh, origin point did not move. Its only rotation had changed. Okay? Okay. So now this is now the effect of rotate about this global. Notice what happened. The angle is the same as before. But now this original frame does not rotate about its own axis. It rotates about this axis. And because there is a distance between them, it's going to actually have to move to this point. Let me try and draw an, an arrow or, a, or an arc to show you what's going on. So this frame, because it's rotated about this axis, because of this distance right here, oh, it's pain here. So because of this distance that is between the, the, the frame itself and the, the, the rotation, it has to go along this arc right here until it gets to this point. So as you can see now, the, not only we achieve the same, by the way, if you think about it, this angle right here, this rotation here, is the same as this rotation. Is that right? If you think about it, I mean, I ignore the position for a minute. 
I mean, the orientation of this line and the orientation of this line is exactly the same as the orientation of this line here. Is that right? The orientation here and the orientation here. The only difference between them now is that the position now has changed. Now the O or the origin of this projectile has changed. So now we have O2. And this is the fundamental difference between rotate about local and rotate about global x axis. So the rotate about global x axis, because of this difference along between them, it affects also the position of the frame itself. And let's take a look at the situation from three dimensional view. And here we go. I try my very best to. to Created the effect, but I'm not sure if it's working or not. But again, this is the original frame. This right here is the original frame. Let me change that pointer. So this is the original frame right here. And once you rotate about this axis, not this axis, and this axis is the global x axis, yeah. Then because there is a difference between them, so the the point is also going to move, and then the new frame is now here. If you once again look at the orientation of the frame, this frame right here versus, yeah, uh, this one, versus this frame. The orient orientation-wise is the same orientation, effect, but now we also have the positional change. And the position has moved from this point to that point. And that is, once again, the difference between global and local. So that is why, and we, and moving forward, I mean, up to this point, we never cared whether export local or global. But moving forward from now on, you must know you must be given that information. Otherwise, either you assume or you cannot move forward. So if you know that the, this is the global axis, then you will have to, uh, this will be the effect of it. Okay, so what happens? How does actually this happen? It looks like I did not really write it in the slides. How, oh, you know what, actually it's not in the slides per se. You only have these exercises. And even in my own copy, I don't have the solutions. But I'll do it with you uh, on the fly. So um, the difference between local and global is the order of multiplication. For local axis or for local x axis, we usually pre-multiply. So if the rotation is here, then we pre-multiply it. But if it's a global axis, then you post-multiply. Okay. Now I could tell you pre or post, but there's actually a faster way to, to remember this. And the best way to remember how to figure out the correct order of multiplication is to use a very lovely shortcut. And to implement this shortcut, let's take a look at this situation here. You see, uh, this is the exercise. This time, this one we'll do together. Okay? So, uh, as a sort of a hands-on together. I mean, I will walk you through the steps, but then after that, uh, the hands-on and the labor work, you may have to do it yourself. So what's going on here is um, this is the original frame. Okay, and now you are given these actions in this order. Um, this is not the multiplication order. These are the actions order. You still need to figure out the order of multiplication. So what's going on now? You are, you are basically, the, because the question now specifically told you, determine the correct order of operation, meaning which one comes first? Should we start with the translation first or this one first or which one? Um, so the best way to, and then after that, develop the T-matrix. We don't have to do, we know how to do that, just multiply, and then find the, the final frame matrix. And we also know how to do that. So quick uh, notes. So you need to know which one comes first. So T1, uh, T2, uh, T3, and so on and so forth. Which one of these actions, and T4, and so on and so forth, until this is the correct, let's say you identify the correct order of multiplication. Not necessarily one, two, three, four, maybe two comes first, maybe three comes first. You have to figure out which one comes first. You have to basically label this, which one comes first. And once you develop the correct order of multiplication, just a, it's just a matter of multiplication. Just multiply them the same way we did it in previous exercises. Uh, yeah, for example, here. Once you figure out the order of multiplication, just multiply, all right? Uh, or maybe, I think this is a good example right here. So this is the correct order of multiplication, and this is the matrix. Uh, this is the matrix form right here. Once you convert it into a matrix form, then you multiply them, the labor work, and of course shortcuts, and then you develop the T matrix. And that was, or that is, the requirement or the second requirement of the exercise. Uh, first of all, determine the correct order, then determine the T matrix by simply performing the multiplication, and once you have the T matrix, then find a prime. And by now, we all know how to do that. A prime is simply equal to the T matrix pre-multiplied by A. And where is A? It's right here. Okay? 
So a T matrix is the one you developed in this step. And how do you develop the T matrix? Is by first figuring out the correct order of multiplication and then performing the multiplication. Okay, so I want you to take a look at this letter between G and L. I know what I'm gonna say next will sound very cheesy, but I want you to do this yourself. I want you to do this uh, once again. Uh, I want you to put the two letters next to each other, G and L, and then do a small modification to it. So G and L. And instead of writing a G the way you, it's written here, I want you to put an arrow this way. And actually, sorry, the G is stuck like that. The G ends really, uh, let me just clear this up. And what I'm, and it will sound funny what I'm doing right now, but trust me, it's a very powerful shot. So again, G ends like this. Uh, clear this up again. Uh, well, I'm going to update the slides a little bit. Add this, this funny part here. Okay, so this is how the G looks like when you write it by end. This is L, how it looks like, right? What I want you to do is to add uh, something to it. I'm going to change the color a little bit. So I want you to do this add arrows. This funny arrow looking or goofy arrow looking simply is a reminder that whatever you see a global axis, whatever you see a global axis, uh, move in this direction. Follow the arrow basically. What does that mean? I'm going to write it down on notepad. Okay. So, um, sorry, new document. Okay. So, figuring out order of multiplication. If, let me see, if global, then uh, move to the left. That's basically it. I'm going to let it in right on. Okay? Um, if local, if you guess, move to the right. Yes. Move to the right. Uh, what do you mean by move to the right? Basically, move to the left simply means uh, we multiply. And this guy right here means force multiply. Multiply. And, uh, but we're not going to use this term right here, force multiply and pre-multiply, is because what if you have multiple, like three or four effects, one after another, then force what, pre-multiply, what does going to become confusing? So the easier way to deal with this is to simply move to the left, or to the left most. And that's, that would make perfect sense in a minute. So uh, most means at the very end of the left, okay? Uh, once again, the best way to do this is to do an extra. So now we can actually, we are giving this bunch of activities right here. And if you notice these activities, some of them are global axis, but some of them are local axis. Oh wait, this is beta. Uh, this is supposed to be a number. Uh, I think I'm gonna, uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to uh, yeah, this alpha and beta have to be given, and they're not given, so I'll, I'll provide those later. But for now, uh, where did we go? Yeah, case one. So in case number one, ignore the fact that beta is not given. I'll give you the value for beta later. But then what, what's going on is that we are given these actions, and we would like to figure out the order of multiplication. So the way we're going to do this, we're going to first start with the very first given action. Which one is it? Action number A, right? So we're going to start with... A, how do you start with it? A? We're just going to put it somewhere in between, like this, in the middle of the sentence, in the middle of the line, like that. Okay? What does A represent? Represent actually uh, this activity right here. Highlighter, yeah. This is activity number A. So this is right now, we don't know whether it's first or last or whatever. We're just going to put it somewhere in the middle. Okay? Okay, now we move on to the next activity, Z. Now let me ask you guys, is this a global activity or a local? Or is it around a local axis or a global axis? If you remember the definitions of a global, we said in the a, in a theory slides, we said um, uh, you would be given the word global or X or Y or Z or whatever. We've, we've defined those in a, in a theory slides before. But right now, you can see that this is a Z. Right? So if it's a Z, what is it? Is it a local activity or a global? Is it about the local X, Z axis or a global Z axis? 
Can someone answer me? Answer me. Is it global, sir? It's a global because simply said right here, Z axis. And I think that was discussed in an earlier slide. Um, I think it was um, fundamentals, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, no, not this one. I think it's industrial robots. Yeah, right here. So you see, global simply, you will be told global, straight away, global Z axis or the home coordinates, or the fixed coordinates, or the base axis, or simply given X, Y, Z. But if you, otherwise, if you could be said local coordinates, or uh, two coordinates, or ND factor, or NOA, or simply local X, local Y, local Z, something like that, you know what I mean? So now that you, are, you remember these things, or you remind you of these things, so now you know that the second activity will be, uh, it's a global, is that right? Do we agree on that one? And we said that since it's a ah, man, the thing that we moved this, um, the one that I drew earlier here. So now that we said that this is a global, so if you remember what I told you about the arrow and all that funny stuff, right? So this is a G for global, right? And the arrow says go left, is that right? So since G is here, so activity B will move to the left. That will be here. So now we know that at the very least, activity B will come before activity A. Why is that? Because activity B is a global activity. And according to the rule, if it's a global, move to the left most, or to the end of the left. Is that right? OK, let's move on to the next one. Uh, ignore the fact that B is not, beta is not given. Let's just say that beta is equal to 20. OK? All right. Oh, not this again. This is real painful. OK, and uh, yeah, let's just say that the angle was given to 20. So once again, is this local or global? Global, sir. Global. So where do I put it? Do I put it here between A and B or left most? What does that mean? You go to the very end of the left. Is that right? So this way, C will come here now. So that's now activity C. Hit the hang of it, right? So now the last two activities, what's the order of uh, the activities? Where is activity D and C and E? Can you, can you quickly do this now and figure out the rest of the order? So this once again is global, and this is global, so they both go to the left. So basically, we now end up with uh, this. We can get B, and then also we get E in the end. Is that right? So now you know how that, it, if it's simply, uh, Sarah, is it, this is reversed or the, the opposite of the given activity. You're right, but we're not gonna dwell on that. Just apply this rule and you'll be fine. So since this case was, they were all global, if you notice, they were all around the global axis. So all you have to do is really is reverse the action. So it becomes from the last one to the first one. So it will be um, trans, trans, then rotate, rotate, and then trans. You know what I mean? And that's basically how this works. And now that you know that this activity will be like that, so these two will be starting first together, and since they are one after another, they will combine with each other. And since you have a translation coming before a rotation, then these two will also combine. So these three together will very quickly combine. And this one does not combine with this, so you'll end up with rotate, rotate, multiplied by a translation. So something very much manageable that you can do. The rest of the exercise is on you, uh, is for you to do as a workout. So the very first part, which is about figuring out the order of multiplication, is we already discussed just now. So first of all, all you need to do is start with the very first activity, put it somewhere in a sheet or in a line, and then look at the rest of the activities. If it's a global, then you put it on the left. So as you can see from here, then here, then here, then and so on. If it's uh, local, we haven't seen a local example yet, but we will see in a minute, but Let's say that this is example number one. So this is case one, okay? Any questions about this? What's next after you figure out the order of multiplication is that you take activity E, which is this guy right here, and then you rotate, you rotate to the matrix form. And then this one also you rotate to the matrix form. So this, these two will combine, and this is a rotation. So these three will combine very easily. And then you have another rotation and another translation, and you can do the multiplication and you can solve the example uh, requirement number two. 
By the way, uh, this right here is simply the solution for case uh, part one, which is determine the correct order of multiplication. This is the order of multiplication. This is the answer. That's it. Now, part two, we can find one right here. This is the answer to that. Okay, what about the second uh, part? Well, simply, you have to do the rest of the work. Convert to matrix form, matrix form, and then, then perform multiplications. All right? Um, don't forget the shortcuts. They perform multiplications and use shortcuts. Short. Once you have the T-matrix in the end, then simply, uh, once you have the T-matrix ready, then you need to do the requirement number three, which is essentially A prime is equal to uh, T pre-multiplied by A, and A is given in T you find from part two, or two, and then problem is solved. Any questions so far? Okay, so let's move on to... Uh, the next one, the next slide. The next slide now is you have, if you look at the example, you'll see that N, 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 and they're all local, is that right? So very quickly now, and on your own, figure out the order of multiplication for case number two. I'm gonna put this down here, okay? So now, knowing the, the shortcut, how to do uh, the earlier case, I'll give you uh, some time, very quickly, uh, Figure out the case number two. Again, you start with the very first action, put it somewhere in the middle, and then take a look at the next actions. If it's L, as you can see for local, then this goes to the rightmost, right? Or the at the end of the right, right? So rightmost. You know what I mean? And then figure out the order of activity. I'll give you a minute. Uh, and then uh, uh, I will see your solution. And not the whole exercise, just, just requirement number one, which is figuring out the order of multiplication. Anyone? Anyone will tell me the answer? You can just tell me verbally. Unmute yourself and then tell me the correct order of multiplication. It's A, B, C, D, E. Yeah, basically you follow the correct order. So let's start with the first activity, right? Which is in this case would be A. And then you simply take a look at the next one. It's local according to the rule over there. Uh, there is this nice shortcut over here, just to the right. So that will be here. And then the next one would be also local, so that would be C. And you keep going until you finish the correct order. And once again, now that you have a different order altogether, you will obviously the T matrix here will be different than the T matrix here. So that would be T1. You can call it the T matrix for T number one. <laughs> Excuse me, and this will be T number two. Okay. Now you can guess what's going to be the next case or case number three is we need to find the T matrix for the third case. I mean, that will be the next situation. So you put G and L, and then once again, apply the same principle and the same rule and try to find out the order of multiplication for the third case or when we have mixed coordinates. So G and L, I know that G and L are very corny, but, um, this will be quite effective for me. So based on this, and uh, based on this simple algorithm right here, determine the correct order of multiplication if they were mixed uh, axis. Okay, there are some there are some people in the class or in the group with us right now that are very quiet, meaning they never ever volunteer. They participate, they, they post the solution on Telegram. But they're usually very late or they're usually very quiet. So I'm basically taking note of who usually participates and who usually doesn't participate. And at some point, I will simply pick up the names myself. I'm just going to point or ask an individual person to answer the question. And um, I'm going to pick up the people who don't participate. 
So for those who are usually participating, you are safe, but then for those who are hiding or quiet or silent all the time, uh, you are basically telling me to ask you to, to participate. So you're, you're putting a target on your head. So once again, any takers? Anyone tell me right now the answer? Uh, so Go, yeah. Go. E, e, B, A, C, D. Let's start with, uh, so E, E, B, what is that there again? E, B, A, C, D. C, D. Um, yeah. Anyone else? Do you guys agree with them? If you agree, just raise your hand quickly. Is there e, B, A, C. I think there's something missing. What about uh, A, B, C? What about D? Uh, D is last, after C. Okay. Okay, I see a lot of hands raised, so everybody agrees. Okay, let's see. So we start once again <coughs> with the first item, which is A. We we'll always start with the very first activity. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. The next one is a global, so it comes on the left, so that's a B right here. And then the next one is N, which is a local, so it goes to the rightmost, which is right here. So that's a C. And then we next we have another local, so it goes to the very end, and that would be a D. And then finally we have a global, so it goes to the left at the end, or the very left most, so that would be a D. And that is exactly what uh, answer that was discussed earlier. Uh, thanks a lot, uh, Guriel, so that's the correct answer. Once again, usually this is the easiest part, which is figuring out the, I mean, the, figuring out the coordinates. Um, then after you figure out the coordinates, now begins the labor work. The labor work essentially is when you begin to do the matrix multiplication. Uh, I'm not going to lie to you guys. Uh, matrix multiplications is the tedious exercise because you have to do a lot of it. And when you do kinematics, and you need to do it by hand. You might be using a shortcut like, uh, like the way I did it with Excel or whatever, but then you'll be cheating yourself because uh, in the real test or the real whatever, you still have to do it by hand. I don't have to do any tests, so that's why I'm using shortcuts. But for yourself, you have to do it by hand because you want to practice. The more you do it, the faster you will become at it, and, and also the more accurate. You see, the thing about matrix operations is that you need to have two conflicting skills at the same time. You need to be accurate, which requires you to take your time. And at the same time, you need to be fast, which again might cause you to make errors. So you, you don't want to rush too fast because that will cause you errors. And you don't want to take your sweet time because that will waste a lot of time and you will end up not having enough time to solve the question. So you need to have the right balance. You need to be uh, efficient. So the right balance here means that you are accurate, but you are also quick. And the only way to develop that balance is by doing exercises as, as many as possible. The more you exercise, the more you solve questions and exercises, the more or the better you will be at it, the, the more efficient you will be, you'll become. You will develop shortcuts. You will learn some sort of shortcuts by yourselves. You will realize certain patterns. You will realize, hey, wait a minute, this is faster. I can do this quickly now. So the way to figure these things out is by performing these exercises. There's no way about it. Don't tell yourself, oh, this is easy. I'll do it later in the test. No, don't. If you do it later in the test for the first time, you will be slow, you will be um, inaccurate, you will make mistakes, and you will be lost. And uh, that's why I need you to practice. Not only you, I need you to practice how to perform the operations, but you also need to practice how to trace back your steps. What if you made an error? How do you know where the mistake was? You're not going to go back and start all over again. That would be a nightmare. You need to be able to go back, trace back your steps and figure out where was the mistake and then fix it and go back. I mean, and, and keep going. So that's why it's important to these skills of going faster, accurate, able to trace your, your steps will only come to you if you perform matrix multiplications with numbers. It's not gonna come to you uh, from the sky. It's exactly once again, like learning to swim. You jump in the pool, you drown for a while, you. You hold the wall, but then after a while, you pick up the skills and you become good at it. And that's the same thing comes with matrix operation. Uh, um, um, I mean, matrix operation and multiplication. Okay. Uh, of course, another thing you should do is to learn shortcuts. Like here, uh, the first case, these three will combine directly, so you don't have to multiply five or six operations, only two or three. 
Similarly here, you might find different patterns and different combinations here, and different shortcuts here and here. So once again, identify those shortcuts, use them, and then reduce the amount of effort and labor work you need to do. Okay. Okay, uh, graphical based. No, we decided to skip it. Uh, for next week. Graphical means you look at the picture and you solve it without any, you still have to do matrix operations, but you will be required. You will be based on a diagram rather than giving information directly. I'll, uh, I'll come to this next week. Now let's talk about this. Uh, this is the last part for today. And next week we do graphical uh, transformations and then we move on to the next uh, section. I think after that we have forward kinematics, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, after that, follow-up kinematics is my opinion is the easiest section of the whole thing. So we, have, we can afford to use less time. Okay, so now what is the meaning of symbolic operations? You see, up to this point, all the operations and exercises were numerical. What does that mean? It means the exercises you've seen so far contains numbers. And the matrix contains numbers, as you can see here. Um, here, numbers numbers, everything you've seen so far, all contains matrix with numbers. Okay, so why you wanna change that? <laughs> uh, there is a reason for why I need to change that. And I'll come to that in a minute. But in reality, um, moving forward, all of these solutions are useful only for the instances uh, based on the specific value. What does that mean? In an earlier example, let's say, um, I think maybe there's an example here. Yeah, there's an example. So it's only based on the instances or the values that you were given in that exercise. If you were given a cosine 30, okay, that's great, but that's only true at angle equal 30. What about 31? What about 32? What about 50? You know what I mean? So oh, what if the value changes? Like I said, what if the value of the angle is not 30 anymore? Let's say it was 29, or it's changing from 30 until 100. Are we going to repeat the calculations we've done and all the multiplications 100 times? If the values are incremented between 0 to 30, say 30 values, like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, all the way until 30, are we going to repeat the operations and exercises and all this stuff 30 times? Of course not, because that would be a nightmare, and of course that would be uh, stupid. Instead, what we're going to do, we're going to develop the, we're going to solve the same problems, but symbolically, using symbols rather than using numbers. And the purpose of that is that because that will allow us to use variables rather than using numbers. And that in turn will help us to create equations and formulas. If you remember, if you remember the very purpose of kinematics is to develop algorithms for robot programming. We talked about this in a very long time ago. Is that right? If you remember in the very beginning of, um, what is this? Uh, slides. Uh, Kinematics part one, the frame matrix. Um, if you remember, when we talked about kinematics in the very beginning, right, we said that we want to find a relationship between uh, forward and inverse uh, kinematics. See, so giving the values, what will be uh, in forward kinematics, giving the angles, theta one, theta two, theta three, find the, the values here. Well, what we saw so far was giving specific numbers we put into a matrix template and then we find the values. But then what if the value, the values of theta change? Then we'll have to repeat the process. But no, we're not gonna actually really gonna do that. What we're gonna develop is gonna develop a formula or a relationship between the, the, the forward values and the input values. What are you talking about? Well, uh, let's uh, take a look at the slide. Let's move on with the slides. Um, yeah, transformations. So let's go to here. So the very purpose, if you remember, is to actually develop what's called to, to create equations and formulas between uh, equations and formulas between them, between x, y, z, which is the coordinates of the end defector, and alpha, beta, gamma. This is gamma, not x, right? This is the real reason why we're doing robot kinematics, right? It's because we want to develop those equations. We don't want to do, uh, we, just, we don't want to solve only in individual instances. So if that's the case, what was the purpose of all of these exercises? Well, the purpose is that uh, to get, we are still going to apply the same equations. We are still going to apply the same procedures, but only now with symbols or variables 
rather than with numbers. Okay, let's see that in action. So let's return to this ex example right here. So this example right here, as you can see, we've seen it before in a previous, I mean previously, but we were given the values for x uh, for the for the rotation. Actually, let's go back to it right uh, here. Go back to uh, yeah. So if you go back to this exercise right here. No, 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 it was even earlier. Yeah, right here. This is how we solve this exercise, right? The exercise 2.8. We were given the values for x, rotate about x, which is 30 degrees. Translate 2 and 6 and 11 and rotate y and 20, sorry. And then the way we solve this example was simply by doing the operations that we learned. First, convert into matrix form, then multiply, and then use the shortcuts. This is one shortcut we combine, and then we put it here, and then we multiply these two things together. We will do exactly, even once we have these two together and multiply them, then we multiply this and now we develop this solution. Now, this is what I meant by an instant, an instant solution. What does that mean? Meaning that this solution is only valid for these values. So if the value for the angle of 30 change, let's say now it's 31, instead of 30, this, this solution is not valid anymore. We will have to repeat the exercise but now we have to change this to 31 and then redo the exercise. You know what I mean? So this is the, the, the advantage and disadvantage of, uh, of um, numerical uh, questions. By the way, if you're thinking numerical multiplication is difficult, wait until you see symbolic multiplication. <laughs> Don't freak you out, but um, after you learn how to do uh, symbolic or, or variable multiplications, uh, this you see in front of you now, which is numerical multiplication from child's play. But the point here is simple, uh, similar, uh, is that this answer right here is only valid for these values, for 30 and for this position and for this angle. If you want to, if you want, if you have these values change, we have to repeat the process. Now, we don't want to repeat the process, so instead, what are we going to do? <coughs> Make it up here and go back forward. Yep. Yep. So instead of finding uh, an instant solution and repeat it every time the value changes, we instead going to do uh, this. We're going to actually solve it symbolically. We're going to assign a variable called alpha for this angle, and x and y and z for the translation, and angle beta for the rotate about gamma. And then we're going to solve exactly the same way that we did in exercise 2.8. And then use our solution to develop the matrix. Let's do it. So, uh, yeah, so basically, here's how it's looking like. First of all, step number one, rewrite, this, the, rewrite the, this line right here, but in matrix form. Let me clean this up again. Uh, excuse me, guys, one second. Okay, so once again, what's the first step is to... Uh, to rewrite the step, as you can see from here, in matrix form. So this is in matrix form, right? And this is matrix form, and this is in matrix form. And once again, we did not do anything new. We just rewrite the matrix, but we, we use the values given to us. Rather than cosine theta, as you can see from the moment, from temporal form, we just use alpha here. Alpha, alpha, alpha. And we put x, y, and z. This is the x, y, and this is the x, y, and z right here. And my apologies, this is supposed to be beta, not gamma. But uh, we can fix this correctly by simply thinking that this is gamma, actually. OK? Uh, so this is gamma right here. So once again, uh, small correction, this will be gamma, yeah? not uh, uh, beta. By the way, it's supposed to be beta, but I, I made a mistake. So this is gamma. OK? So once again, I use the correct template, thank God, which is the rotate about y matrix, and then here. And once again, we use the same shortcuts also. The shortcuts apply whether it's a numerical or symbolic. Again, this is a linear. Uh, pre-multiplied by a rotation, or comes before a rotation, so it gets combined. So now we have these two matrices that we're going to multiply, okay? So now we have two matrices, and we need to multiply. I'm going to give you a moment. Go ahead and do the next step of this. Go ahead and do it on your own. We have time. Um, yeah, I'll give you about a couple of minutes. At least try to solve a few items of these. And then I'll show you the solution. Go ahead and give it a try. 
and then we do the rest of this together. Okay, so let's do it. So once again, the very first thing to do into multiplying this is to, is to the very first step for you to correctly find the answer. This is by the way the final answer. Is to essentially uh, to put the matrices in a correct form. So this is the first matrix which is rotate about x, rotate alpha about x, and this is the two the, these two matrices in here. And the very first thing is to put them in the correct order. This is the final answer. Okay, um, and right here is the, the matrix that I want to show you. So how do you come up with this matrix? How did I come up with this matrix? Well, we use the usual matrix operations. This right here is position one and one. Is that right? Okay, so this is one and one. This is row one, this is column one. We apply the same principle we did when we were dealing with numbers, but now we're dealing with symbols. So cosine gamma multiplied by one is cosine gamma again, and then zero multiplied by zero is zero multiplied by negative sine gamma, and then zero and zero. So that will give us cosine gamma here. Okay, here's a second item, here's another item. Uh, so this is essentially uh, two and two, is that right? Oh, where's my mouse? My mouse is acting up again. Okay, so here's uh, two and two. And once again, how do you find uh, Two and two, we said, this is position two and two with the matrix. So that means row number two and uh, column number two. And again, multiply as usual. Zero multiplied by zero, that'll give you a zero. Cosine alpha multiplied by one, cosine alpha, then zero and zero, is that right? And that will give us cosine alpha here, okay? Uh, another example, and let's see this, this one right here. This is two and four, so this is two and four. You know what? Two and four means the second column, the second row multiplied by the fourth column. So this is right here is two, and this is four. And again, so zero multiplied by x, that's zero. Then cosine alpha multiplied by y, that's right here, y cosine alpha. Then plus uh, negative s uh, alpha or sine alpha multiplied by z, and that's right here. And then zero multiplied by one, that's gone. So that's the answer right here. And is there one more? Yeah, there's one more. So once again, this is one and this is uh, three and one. Yeah, this is the third row multiplied by the first column. So this is the third row multiplied by the first column. So again, zero. Okay, C S multiplied by zero is also zero. And then right here is the last one, which is this two, right? Cosine alpha multiplied by sine gamma, and then there's a negative sign. Don't forget. So it's right here. And then the last one is zero and zero. And the answer is zero. I didn't do the rest of the matrix, but I just did selected items only. Okay. So that's how you simply apply the same way we did matrix operations in numbers, but you do it in symbols, okay? Or in variables, if you wish. And then I only showed you a selected items. Okay, I'll leave the rest for you as an exercise to develop, but you must learn how to develop this matrix, okay?
So, Professor Good, any questions before I move on? Uh, we're only a couple of slides and then we're done for today. Any questions about this? No questions, sir. Okay. So, this is now the last couple of slides. Uh, yeah, this is the last slide right here. So, what is the purpose of this matrix that you developed in the end? This right here, after we develop this last matrix, how are we going to use it? Now, remember that this actually, this matrix you're looking at right now, this actually is a free matrix. What does that mean? Let's see, oh, yes, it's a T matrix, but uh, it results after explaining, or it was a result of multiplying these actions, is that right? So if you think about it, this actually, this matrix right here contains all the parameters that are shown here. We have alpha, we have beta, and we have, we have alpha, and this is gamma, yeah? We have gamma, we have alpha, and we have X, Y, Z, is that right? Well, they are all shown inside this matrix. We have X, we have Y, we have Z, and we also have um, alpha and gamma. Is that right? So you have X, Y, and Z. We have alpha and we have gamma. So all the parameters of this of the matrix operations are presented. And more importantly, this matrix you see here is equivalent to the usual, the, the regular templates of the frame matrix. And because they are equal, every item is also equal. So NX, if you remember, we, all, we discussed last week what NX means. So NX is now, in this case, will equal to cosine gamma. And PX is equal to X. That's no surprise there. But then PY is equal to all of this now, this formula you see right here. And PZ is equal to all of this now. Okay? And the rest of the matrix is actually found right here. So now, having this with us, it doesn't matter now what values you have. If, you, if alpha is equal to 30 or 31 or 100 or even billion, it doesn't matter. You just plug it into the formula. And then we solve and find the corresponding values for x, y, and so on. So rather than solving for one instant only and then repeat the process for another instant, we solve in symbols and develop equations. And then those equations can then be used to solve for any instant. And this is the fundamental purpose of using or working with uh, matrix operations uh, for kinematics, because we need, definitely need to do this moving forward. OK, we're running out of time. I think we have a couple of minutes before the show ends. Uh, but this is it for today. Uh, I think we are done for today. Uh, next week, we will basically continue. We will do this last part, which is graphical uh, transformations. But we are saying, we can say that we are 90% done with transformations. Uh, after we finish graphical based transformations, then we are ready to work with uh, forward kinematics and inverse kinematics as well. Okay, so today we cover transformations, uh, the T matrix, linear and rotary, global and local, and, and also symbolic operations. There is more exercises I left out. I suggest that you go through these exercises. And there is one more exercise in the end. I need you to develop this. So given these three matrices, develop the matrix defined by multiplying all of these things together. So go ahead and don't forget to do all of these exercises and practice working on them so that you'll be ready for the next week uh, session. Okay. If you notice the difficulty of this thing, of the difficulty of the content is actually rising, the more we move forward, the more difficult things get. Uh, if you want to help yourself, perform the exercises on your own time so that next session will become easier for you. If you don't, if you skip this, then things will become difficult for you. Also, you have assignment two to work on, which is about transformations. So make sure you uh, cover that as well. I think we are done. We are running out of the time. Yeah, about one more minute left. Uh, any questions in this last minute? If you have any other questions or concerns, make sure you drop them in a Telegram group uh, message uh, for me. Otherwise, we will have to end now. It's just the last minute, literally. Uh, the session will be over. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, don't forget, you will be able to see a recording of this session uh, available on our pages, as well as on the YouTube channel. I uh, wish you all the best and have a good evening. Okay, guys. Thank you, sir.